Although it has been a hell of a long time since I last covered the series on this channel, I must say I really love Baki. And my favourite character in this series, and well, my favourite part of the series overall, is the king, the world's strongest creature, the ogre, Hanmi Ujiro. And that's not just because he's some OP alpha chad, but instead due to the thematic importance he has to Baki as a story, and due to the nuanced way his character is handled by Itagaki to explore the idea of strength and what it means to be the strongest. I'll try to get this video as anime only friendly as possible, but I will occasionally mention manga only parts of the story, but not the ones that are massive spoilers. So let's jump in and discuss the world's strongest creature. <laughs> If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell, as I can't explain to you how much such a small action can do for this channel. And if you want to go the extra mile and support me even further, you can always check out my Patreon. Anyway, on with the video. Baki is a series about strength, the idea of what it means to be strong and what it means to become strong are up there for some of the most important themes explored in the entire 1000 chapter plus narrative. As you would have heard countless times if you had watched the 90s Baki anime, If someone is born a male, at least once in his life, he'll dream of becoming the strongest man alive. Grappler, the martial artist who aims to become the strongest in the world. That is the essence of the entire story encapsulated in one line. After all, it's Grappler Baki. It's the story of Baki becoming the ultimate grappler, a martial artist who aims to become the strongest in the world. But this line also can reference pretty much every character in the story, as one thing that links them all together is their desire for strength. I mean, look no further than the Maximum Tournament arc, where 32 men fought out with the aim of discovering who is the strongest. These men risked their careers, their titles, their lives and their futures, all for this simple desire to be the strongest. As Iron Michael says, this tournament is more important than any title match. We see the lengths these fighters go towards their goal of being the strongest, but even so we know that none of them will ever reach this goal. And that is because the strongest already exists. And this is Hanmi Ujiro. He stopped an earthquake with a punch, walked through bulletproof glass, made a skyscraper shake by standing in it, and can beat any living creature on the planet, even cancer and AIDS couldn't kill him. Ujiro is the definition of strong. Sure other characters in the series do have insane feats, but Ujiro's always stand on another level. They say that he is always getting stronger, even when he's far above everyone else on the planet, but he still gets stronger. There is an unreachable gap between Ujiro and the rest of humanity, no, the rest of life on the entire planet. And that's the point of his character, he is strength personified. If the idea of strength was a person, it would be Hanmi Ujiro. With strength comes many things, but most importantly comes freedom. Even if Oliver may have things to say about it, Ujiro is without a doubt, the most free character in the entire series. As Yujiro isn't constrained by the law, he isn't constrained by borders or society, nor even by human morals. He is free to do whatever he wants without consequence because no one can stop him. He can be as violent and as heinous and as arrogant as he wants, as who is going to tell him not to be? And that's why he is the way he is. He is free to act on every impulsive, hypocritical and chaotic thought he has. And that in a way is just deeply sad. Although I'm not saying Yujiro isn't at fault for the countless heinous acts he has committed across the series, I can't help but feel a tinge of sorrow knowing that he is just like everybody else, but unlike the rest of us doesn't have anything to hold him back. We have all thought about doing something bad or messed up. We have all at some point in our life thought, oh if only I could beat that guy up, or if only I could make that person get what's coming to them. But due to the existence of the law, of the fact we are weak, the fear of the consequences, we never go through with such fleeting thoughts. However, what if you were strong enough to act on those thoughts? What if you had no fear of the consequences? In that case, why wouldn't you do it? And that is what it's like to Yujiro. The man upon birth didn't wait to suckle from his mother, no, he took the milk by force. He, from the moment he was born, was strong. Most people, no matter how strong they are, experience the weakness of being an infant, but not Yujiro. And as such, he has never known what it meant to be weak, and never knew what it meant to be denied something. He hates the weak because he doesn't understand them. He feels so isolated from the world because no one is like him. They don't live in the world of freedom that he does, one without any kind of restraint. That's the reason he is friends with people who like him are free. First there is Oliver, the unchained, the person who is known as the freest man in the world. He makes a mockery of an entire nation, leaving prison wherever he pleases. Then there's Muhammad Ali, so many fought against the USA, the strongest country in the world, in protest of his rights. It wasn't that Yujiro respected his agenda, it was that he respected the man who risked his title and his life in order to oppose the United States of America. 
Even someone like Ando is free in a sense. He lives in the wilderness, the land of the bears, and survives by preying on them even though it's their world. All of Yujiro's friends are people that are free in one way or another, as he can't relate to the weak, that bow down to others, and don't do whatever they want. Yujiro in the broadest sense can be called a human without constraint. He is someone who acts on impulse and emotion without the shackles of reason, logic, or society, and that is why he is so respected in the Baki world, despite how horrible of a human being he is. And I think in a way we can all envy Yujiro a little in that sense. To be able to live freely without any care of what other people do or say is something that sounds absurd, but it sounds enticing at the same time. It feels liberating, but there is such a thing as being too free, so free you become shackled by it. Yujiro, due to his immense level of freedom, because he can act on all his emotions to the fullest, is deeply alone. Any connections he forms can be broken in an instant, just from some impulse he has no reason not to act on. His relationship with Emi wasn't a loving one, but the fact he could end a 15 year old relationship just on a violent impulse is both shocking and saddening. No matter how happy something makes Yujiro, if he has one negative thought about it, it's a risk of being destroyed as he single-handedly destroys everything he loves in this world by his own hands. He killed the closest thing in the world to a woman he loved and neglected his child, the only family he had left. If he was constrained by morality, then maybe he wouldn't do these things and maybe he would have been happier for it. But due to being so strong, this just never occurred. Human nature is explored heavily in Baki and Yujiro being the freest to act on his human nature shows the most wicked and evil sides of humanity. Yujiro isn't held back by morality, he doesn't see right and wrong, and so to him, none of his actions are any different. But to us who can see the world through the lenses of human morality, we can see just how twisted the human mind can be, as everything Yujiro does is not the act of a monster, but of a human. It is something we are all capable of, we just don't do it due to the constraints of morality, society, and the law. And that's what is so sickening, as Yujiro is a human, in some ways you could even call him the ideal human, the strongest and most free of all humans. But just like how too much medicine is poison, too much strength is weakness, Yujiro is too strong, he gets enjoyment out of life sure, be it through drinking, eating, sexual activity or physical exertion, but the one thing he loves most is fighting. And that's the one thing he will never be able to enjoy to the fullest, as no one will ever give him the fight he wants, as everyone is weaker than him. To be denied the one thing you want most in the world because you are too strong is such an absurd but at the same time understandable thing, something that could drive a man to act on every impulse and attempt to feel the joy he knows he will never get to experience. He constantly seeks out strength but by doing so becomes even further and further away from his dream of having an ultimate fight, one that he can actually enjoy. And this dream of his is the reason the story even exists, as Baki was born so that he could fight Yujiro. However, Baki is nothing like Yujiro, in fact he's the complete opposite. He doesn't want to be the strongest, he just wants to be stronger than Yujiro. It may not sound like much of a difference, but it is startlingly different. If Yujiro explores how wicked human nature can be when unconstrained, then Baki shows how kind and wonderful human nature can be. Baki makes friends with others while Yujiro tramples over and dominates others. As a result, Baki gets enjoyment out of his connections and gets to experience feelings of love and care. Baki earns the things he gets through hard work, while Yujiro takes them with no effort. Baki then feels content with his efforts, while Yujiro feels nothing. They both aim to be the strongest, but one does so with human kindness, and as such, lives a far more enjoyable and worthwhile life. Yujiro is the ultimate antagonist for the Baki series, as he shows the most disgusting and wicked result of humanity and of strength. We are meant to dislike him because he is the worst of what us humans can be, but we are also meant to respect him as he is at the same time the pinnacle of what us humans can be. And to an extent we are also meant to feel a certain sympathy for him, as he is something that a human without the limits we all normally have, can become. A sad and disturbed human, the result of the lack of the things we accept and take for granted, limits. He shows the depths humanity can reach without restraint and the sorrow and tragedy that can come from it, as having ultimate strength is a genuine tragedy. Comment of the week comes from Mike10 and I'm glad you enjoy the analysis my friend. If you are interested in my literary endeavours then why not check out my books Gang Fluid Justice and People of Vape Volume 1, available at Amazon.com. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting this channel then consider pledging to my Patreon where for as little as £2.75 a month you can get your name at the end of the video, like Hikari Desu, 7SO, and Smokey McBobby. So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I'm signing out. Stay safe, everyone.